The great Liverpool side that Klopp built over the past decade has been decimated over the last couple of seasons. Just a few of the players who were key cogs to have left are Naby Keita, Oxley chamberlain James Milner, Jordan Henderson and Fabinho. And that's just the midfielders. The attack hasn't been immune from turnover, with Roberto Firmino and Mane making their ways towards the exit. This was exacerbated as absences ravaged the side. Salah, Robertson and Trent would spend their fair share of time unavailable. Even for a manager as great as Jurgen Klopp, this would have been a daunting task to deal with. Tactics are nothing without the right personnel, and having lost so many key players of late, the question was how the Reds would replace them. The answer came in two phases. To bolster the midfield, it was McAllister and Soboslai, none of whom are traditional pivots who stepped in. Wataru Endo was also brought in as a pivot, but one who many overlooked before the season began. One of the biggest decisions Klopp had to make was on Trent Alexander-Arnold. Down the right-hand side, when he played as a traditional fullback, he had proven himself to be one of the most deadly passers in Europe. Whenever he pushed up high down the right-hand side, and most managers would have kept him in this position where he had been operating at such a high level. Salah, on the other hand, had been happily operating as an inside forward, floating in and around the central regions with the rest of his old front three, from where he could then take up the centre-forward role whenever Firmino dropped deeper. This structure allowed Robertson to also push high up down the left-hand side, meaning that Liverpool had a front five. It was supported by a very functional midfield three who would do all the running on their behalf, helping to protect the lateral regions for the back two. But rather than force his new eleven to maintain his playing style and structure, he adapted to the players available to him. McAllister started the season, but as a non-traditional pivot he needed support alongside him. While Endo was a pivot, he was not quite as rangy as the departed Fabinho and in addition is not the most penetrative passer, so it was clear that a dedicated single pivot was no longer viable. The solution, of course, was to use Trent in a role where many had long suspected him to be best suited for, the midfield. He began to invert centrally alongside whichever pivot was present. But that was just the start of Klopp adapting to who he had available to him. With two midfielders comfortable high up in attacking zones compared to his old functional midfield three, they pushed high up into the half spaces to create a midfield box. So in prior seasons, it was the goal-focused inside forwards who often found themselves ready to attack the box with two traditional fullbacks providing the width. Now it was different. Diaz is much closer to being a one versus one winger and was much happier to start out wide and he created space for the more attacking midfielder here. Mo Salah has also seen a shift in his role over the last couple of seasons where he was extremely central in early eras, ready to fill the void by Firmino when he dropped into the midfield. Especially when Nunes was the centre forward, his role shifted. Nunes was much less likely to drop in to link up the play, meaning less need for an inside forward to be ready to move central, so we have seen Salah operate as much more of a touchline hugger with some creative onus on him. 23-24 has seen him have his highest expected assist per 90, most passes into the penalty area and most key passes per 90. Without Klopp having his more functional midfield three to cover the width of the pitch, early in the season the burden fell on the defence. And with Trent happy in the midfield, it was the left-back who would often drop deep to still allow this lateral coverage. Speaking of Trent, his new role gave him exactly what he wanted. More of the ball and increased offensive responsibility. And Trent has thrived. He's unique that where many inverted fullbacks either come infield to be a safe, functional, low-risk passing option, or if they're highly technical, they become the hub of the team seeing a high volume of the ball, playing mainly safe but progressing when possible. He is different. He still inverts, but he sees both high volumes of the ball while still primarily playing high-risk game-stating chances, often a big raking switch. The presence of Darwin Nunes, whether up front or on the left, is also in stark contrast to the dropping Firmino, as now Trent has the option to play the straight ball in behind him. His new role this season has seen Trent rank first for progressive passes as the hub of the side and right up there for total passes per 90 as well. What is also interesting to note is that Trent's crosses per 90 have slowly been coming down as he has spent less and less time crossing to a central front three and instead more time in the centre with the rising number of passes. So what of Soboslai? The Hungarian brings a lot of pros, but aside from his ball striking, his biggest strength is his sheer athleticism and mobility. Salah from this wide region has helped to emphasise this. Sides are so scared to let Salah have a second on the ball that the opposition fullback is drawn to him early. Recognizing this, Salah has been willing to come deeper and deeper in the build-up, 
with his touches in the midfield rising and progressive passes ticking up. But the biggest impact is that it opens a chasm between the centre-back and the full-back, and so Boss Light breaks into the room, where he can then be found by Salah himself, or an expansive pass from Trent in a more central region. So Klopp had found the solution. Except he hadn't. The season had just begun throwing curveballs at him. Robertson would go down with injury, and so would Trent. Mo Salah would leave for AFCON, meaning Klopp's first choice 11 was ripped away from him at certain points. This led to phase two. Harvey Elliott, Joe Gomez, and young Connor Bradley would be the protagonists of this phase, ensuring that Liverpool would not slip out of the most epic title race in over a decade. But testament to Klopp's recognition of individual trades, none of these three men were used even remotely similarly to those they had replaced. Bradley is brimming with potential and seems extremely composed on the ball. But it remains to be seen if he'll be able to develop into a full-time inverted fullback who can operate centrally even in the big matches just yet. But what is clear is that much like Trent, his ability to deliver from out wide is extremely promising. And as such, Klopp has instead opted to use his right back in the traditional manner, more often holding the width. Harvey Elliott has come in as the right winger in Mo Salah's absence. Where Mo Salah is a wide man who is closer to being a centre forward, Elliott operates as a left-footed wide man who is closer to being a midfielder. He's much less of a goal-scoring threat, and instead more of a creative threat. So he instead has been operating in the half space. And here's where things get interesting. Conventional wisdom would have Joe Gomez operate as a third centre-back, with the midfielder dropping beside Endo. After all, Joe Gomez can play as a recognised centre-back. And yes, Klopp has at times absolutely used Joe Gomez in this manner. But Liverpool have transformed from being a side who primarily builds up into the wide areas to then attack the centre in the final third. Now, their midfield box is a major offensive area where they look to overload the midfield of the opposition, giving them the option to play through the centre or drag in the opposition to then free up their elite one versus one wingers. So teams have began to try and protect the centre of the pitch, primarily by being more passive with their forwards and their press, to even up the numbers in the midfield. So there was no longer any need to operate with a back three build-up in most matches, and Joe Gomez has shocked the league by stepping up as a more than competent inverted fullback, both off the left-hand side and when he starts at right back. What that now means is that the midfield four has become a five that changes shape depending on where Klopp's reds need the overload. A higher midfielder can drop in to create a deeper line of three if the opposition is remaining narrow there, or Joe Gomez has proven himself capable of at least positionally operating in higher attacking zones. The obvious downside of the back two is that the flanks are extremely vulnerable on the transition. There is no tactical plan in football that is bulletproof, and this is the risk that Klopp has chosen to take, entrusting the athleticism of the centre-back pairing of Ibrahima Kunate and Virgil van Dijk to cover the space, as well as the one versus one ability of Alisson and more recently Kelleher to bail them out of trouble. So far, it is a risk that has paid off, and the midfield five of Liverpool's can even become a six on occasion if Jota or Gakpo is the centre forward, as they can drop deep, or when Robertson has the freedom to overlap, Diaz can then come in centrally. Liverpool's in-possession tactics have constantly evolved, but as Klopp enters the final stretch of his tenure, he has shown that this old dog still has some new tricks up his sleeve. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one, assessing his title rival, Mikel Arteta.